I think it is super important, especially with some of the events that the city puts on, like you are able to experience our culture and different cultures for free. Some people may not have the means to travel or to go outside of this area. And so for them to be able to experience it in their home is really cool um, and at a free rate as well. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground Podcast, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles. I'm Brady Raynard. Flying solo today as we are excited to bring you authentic stories and experiences of Southwest Louisiana with, you know, the tools that you need to build your own personal Lake Charles itinerary. We've officially made it episode 52. That means we've done officially two years of the podcast. We have some fun coming up later this month as we celebrate the official two year date of the podcast. But 52 episodes here as we talk to Peyton Dodds at Historic City Hall. A lot to get to in that conversation. Uh, Really big into the art scene there and what Historic City Hall has done. Uh, And such an interesting conversation as we kind of see Lake Charles' commitment to not only make art a forefront in a lot of their endeavors, but also make it accessible to people. So that's a fun conversation. Before we get to that, we've got a great meal for you in Envy Eats right now. And this week for Envy Eats, we head to Restaurant Cala, opened about 10 years ago, and ownership has moved hands a few times during that, but the important thing about it is that the brand has stayed. Uh, Cala is, stands for Calcasieu and Louisiana, and they really wanted an upscale NOLA vibe, but still pulling from those cultural ties that we have here in Southwest Louisiana, which is our food here in, native to this area, and then a little bit from the Texas influence, especially the Southeast Texas influence, and they really nail that. Executive chef David Phillips handcrafts this menu, and they really want to make sure that they do everything from scratch, nothing canned, but also they wanted a small menu so that they could execute everything on that menu well. They didn't want to have anything there that, well, don't get this, you know, we do a bunch, but some of it isn't as quite as handcrafted. No, everything on this menu is really meant to almost inspire you to be honest with you i mean everything feels so elevated and i think they really nail that and if i could sum up what cala offers on the menu in one word i would probably just use craft and you can really see it starting with something as simple as the cala burger i didn't order it this time but i've had it before they do american cheese uh, bread and butter pickles, red onion, Dijonese, which, as you know, is a Dijon mayonnaise kind of aioli mixture esque with a brioche brunt, and they do fries. Um, and I actually had to post a picture of it on my Twitter and Facebook. Uh, I put the tags not safe for work because it is incredible looking, you know, kind of poking some fun there. But they now kind of have changed their uh, formula a little bit uh, very recently with the kind of the rise of the smash burger. They kind of leaned in a little bit more to that, and I think it's all for the better. The burger is fantastic. I actually went with someone, and they actually had the burger and loved it. Just a perfect bite, so hearty. Uh, and they do minced onions there at the bottom, and they're crunchy, full of flavor with that buttery bun. And then really that sauce, that Dejeuner's is really the perfect sauce for that burger uh, and that ties it all together. Uh, it definitely is in contention for one of the best burgers in Lake Charles uh, and definitely worth a stop. This time, though, I went with the double cut Iberico pork chop, which they told me the pigs that they uh, that they use from the farm are fed mostly a diet of acorns. And that apparently gives them a little marbling in the uh, in the muscles. So it's much more of a fillet of a pork chop versus a standard pork chop. And honestly, I was blown away. I mean, the presentation's really cool with how they bring it out and they have a gravy on top of it. And it is a huge bone-in pork chop that is so tender. And honestly, I give them credit. It is filet-like and it cuts so easy and is so tender in your mouth. Um, the mustard sauce that they put on top of it, it's a sauce Diane, which is kind of a mustard base. It is apparent, the flavor, but I, it's very tame. It works in tandem with what the pork is bringing there. The crust on the pork was beautiful. Uh, it, it's hard to find a flaw in anything in that dish. I mean, it was one of my favorite pork chops I've ever had. 
Um, and the portion was plentiful. I've, I left feeling stuffed, which I usually at a really craft restaurant, you don't always feel stuffed, which is not necessarily a bad thing. You, you want to make sure to get your full, but there I kind of felt stuffed leaving. And so that's a, a, another plus of what they do. Um, and it came with some, uh, really nice garnishment on the side, like some carrots that had a great crunch, uh, and a cool potato, uh, that they slice really thin within the potato so it kind of flakes off uh, a nice charred flavor on the outside. You kind of dip it a little bit into that sauce there that it's left. But overall, really blown away by the presentation and then just at how good each piece kind of works in tandem and the pork chop. Tender crust was incredible, just an A-plus pork chop there. Uh, we also ordered uh, mac and cheese there on the side, super cheesy, really, really thick cheese. And I like also, too, they got some barbecue pieces of kind of pork there in the middle just for some flavor. I don't like throwing around this term too much, but I, it was the perfect mac and cheese. Like, And what you want from a mac and cheese, cheesy, saucy, a really thick cheese with the noodles, but not too saucy, but not too dry. And it was it towed every line exactly like you wanted it. So uh, really, really enjoyed the mac and cheese. It was spectacular and just another kind of feather in their cap for what they can do. Um, when they say they keep their menu small to continue excellence throughout, they really mean it. And the mac and cheese was phenomenal. I was uh, I, I was really blown away by the time I left. I was like, man, I ate a good bit, but everything that I had was an A+. plus. So uh, highly, highly recommend uh, those items on the menu and, and pretty much anything that you could find because it's all going to be really good. I even took a bite of their black and red fish with uh, topped with a crawfish etouffee, which is really a staple of, of South Louisiana, especially Southwest Louisiana, the Acadiana area. Uh, you'll see that often. Sometimes it's a fried piece of fish. Sometimes it's black and they did a black and with a crawfish etouffee and it was really, really good as well. So once again, highly suggest that as well. All of those dishes were all very, very good. Um, and as far as a location, and it's not far off of downtown, a little bit off of Lakeshore Drive, just off of Lake Street. So uh, you could exit on 210 if you would like, or exit there on the interstate on, on I-10. Either way, it's probably six in one hand, half dozen in the other, but a really nice location. And you could also pair it up pretty well with, if you want some treats after, the Beckery is just next door and another exceptional restaurant that I guarantee you will be featuring here on Envy Eats at some point uh, in the near future. From a great meal to a great guest, we welcome on Peyton Dodds, who is the Director of Cultural Affairs with the city of Lake Charles, she's in charge of both Historic City Hall, Central School, and has many other hats that she wears for the city of Lake Charles. Welcome to the show, Peyton. Thank you very much for having me. Now, as you know, Southwest Louisiana is known for our big city amenities and our small town charm, which really makes, I don't know, a variety of experiences that one can add to the itinerary. In fact, it's kind of overwhelming when you kind of look at all there is to do from the types of food to our outdoor adventures and national and regional entertainment acts that the lake area draws we've got so much and so with that we do like to ask each of our guests how do you play in louisiana's playground are you ready yeah absolutely okay. crawfish or gumbo i'll have to say gumbo why I is think. that because my fiance makes a really good gumbo <laughs> what kind chicken and sausage oh uh, yeah absolutely this is the country gumbo, but it's hard to beat, right? It is. Uh, all right. Poolside or beachside? I would say poolside. The beach is a little too dirty sometimes. You, you get sandy everywhere. Sure. And it's just rough. The pool, you can get up, go home, and you're good. It's a controlled environment. A little bit easier. I can understand that. All right. Last one. Concert or comedy show? Concert. All the way. Why is that? I just love the music. Uh there's so many different ways to see live music around Lake Charles, so sure. that's really cool. Um, that's one of our favorite things to do, actually, is yeah. going to see it. But we do support the comedy locally as well. Um, I think it's it's a huge growing scene here, and so it's a little bit of both, but definitely more live music. Oh, yeah. We've, we've had both on the show, um, and so it is awesome to see the scene here, but it's tough to beat a concert here in southwest Louisiana. Our weather sometimes even plays perfectly into it, and... We've had some really cool scenes. Now, let's start our conversation. And I guess let's start, as we often do, kind of on a macro level, uh, the history of the historic City Hall building. And I know it's transformed. It's been, what, at this point now, almost 20 years 
that it's kind of transformed into what it is now, the Arts and Cultural Center. Tell us all about what Historic City Hall was and now is. So Historic City Hall opened re, or reopened its doors in 1911 after the Great Fire of 1910. The original building was built in 1903, and it actually faced Kirby Street in the Church of Immaculate Conception. So when it was uh, being rebuilt, the city engaged the architectural services of Favreau and Livade from New Orleans for this new construction. And it's got kind of an Italianate structure to it that most uh, structures of that time frame were designed around. And so this building is now on the National Registrar of Historic Places. The second marble floor hall served as the central lobby point for City Hall. And then we have the four-faced clock that was the uh, originally installed in 1911. Mm-hmm. And it originally operated like a cuckoo clock. So it had a 20-foot pendulum that swung down two separate floors back and forth to turn the clock. And so it was computerized in 2001. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, it's been it's been computerized since 2001, and now it just works off of electronic. And then in seven, 1978, City Hall moved to the Pioneer Building where it is now, and Historic City Hall was used as courtrooms. So from 1978 to 2001, it was courtrooms. And then in 2001, Mayor Randy Roach initiated the restoration of 1911 City Hall. Mm -hmm. And then in 2004, they reopened the doors as an arts and cultural center. And so it has been operating as an arts and cultural center for about 20 years now, bringing in nationally recognized exhibits as well as local artists. Um, So it's really cool to see how it's transformed. Yeah, I was going to say, especially how you kind of preserve history, which finding a way to currently still use it. You know, it's one thing just to have a museum, just to have something that's open and you can see. And it's another to have living history inside living history. It is an architectural masterpiece. It is such a beautiful building. We have original hardwood oak floors and staircases and the marble room is just stunning. Like I love being able to work there every single day it is just gorgeous i think it is cool you know you guys have all these great art exhibits in and you walk in and yet you catch yourself looking at the building yeah. just as much as you do the exhibit inside and outside sure it's sure gorgeous so the fire to to still have that fire of 1910 do so much damage and yet still have some original pieces and some you know it, it's awesome to see that kind of history that that still has a part here in Lake Charles. Now, I know that there has real been a focus. There's been a few focuses on the city, one of which has been to the commitment of arts and culture for what the city of Lake Charles has done. How does the Historic City Hall and the Cultural Center play a role in that? So Historic City Hall, as I said, hosts nationally traveling exhibits as well as local and regional artists year round. We are a 7,500 square foot venue with three floors of exhibits, and we frequently host cultural programming, field trips, visual and performing arts, and workshops. We are home to three independent galleries, Gallery by the Lake, Black Heritage Gallery, and Artisans Gallery. All three of these groups lost their gallery space in the hurricane, so Historic City Hall proudly partners with them to offer them a space to showcase and sell their art. And so it's it not only then is a avenue for people to have their art shown or to bring in a national art, you're also in a way kind of elevating local artists as well. Yes. Um, all three of these groups are group artist exhibitions. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Gallery by the Lake will sometimes have 20 to 30 artists in the building. All of them are local or regional to Southwest Louisiana. And they have an opportunity to showcase what they do. They rotate the art out every eight weeks. And so you're constantly having that churn of different people come in here. And it's really cool to see just the differences kind of in one gallery of all of these different artists that we have. And I think art is such a unique hobby or, you know, even a a pastime or a passion. Maybe I'm not really sure which word is the right one to use for it. Um, And I think oftentimes especially at, at once you kind of get to the higher end, there's almost a roadblock for a lot of people to get in because, you know, a lot of these higher end museums are expensive and you see the talent that it takes art and it almost feels like you've got to be hoity toity to really enjoy that style of art. But I love how accessible you guys try to make it as well for people in that. Look, there's a lot of ways to appreciate art. You guys, obviously for one, like y'all don't charge admission to get in. 
We don't. Um, and that's something that we are very proud of and we value. Um, Historic City Hall is a true gem and we uh, value the fact that we offer different forms of art and exposure to different cultures through our exhibits. And it's year round. We are open um, all year. We are open Tuesdays to Saturdays. Um, so you can come anytime for free. Uh, regardless of financial statuses and also most of the cultural programs that we offer, such as our workshops or gallery mm-hmm. talks, are either free or at a very affordable rate. So, uh, And then we partner with local artists that will volunteer their time for some of these workshops or these community out organizations will come in and offer something for us uh, and for our community. So it's really cool that we are able to do this and we're so grateful that the city and the community members are committing to provide art and cultural programming for free. How important do you feel like that accessibility is? I think it is super important, especially with some of the events that the city puts on. Like you are able to experience our culture and different cultures for free. Some people may not have the means to travel Mm -hmm. or to go outside of this area. And so for them to be able to experience it in their home is really cool um, and at a free rate as well. Now, in terms of the actual exhibits, I know, and you've kind of touched on it, like world-renowned artists, we've seen... um, really high in local talent. What is that process like in seeking and then curating it? And what do we have kind of on the docket? Yeah. So I'm thankful and lucky to kind of be like just jumping into this and creating it my own process as well. In the past, um, what we've done is we have like a group of traveling exhibition companies that we can select from. And that's uh, a pretty easy way for us to source different exhibits to come here. They have it already set up and ready to go. and They just ship it out to us. And so that is one way that we will source some of the exhibits that we have. Um, and pretty often we will have some local artists come to us uh, wanting to showcase their art in our building. And so it's nice having people that appreciate it and, and want to be in there as well. I love engaging my staff. Um, I've been doing that a lot recently, asking them their opinions. Is there anyone you've seen that you would like in this building? And um, kind of getting their thoughts on it because they offer so many different and unique perspectives on art, history, and culture, and each have their own niches. And so getting a diverse exhibits in our gallery is also super important. And this year I will be relaunching the exhibit selection committee, which is hand selected and represents some well-known and uh, community involved organizations. Uh, So we'll have various members from a few different community organizations throughout Lake Charles. And we just want to ensure that we're bringing exhibits that are diverse, educational, and sure. interesting to the people. And as far as what's coming up next and and the rest of this year, I think I was looking, is it a kind of a, a, a birder style one, right? Yes. So that will be launching on September 27th. That is actually Gallery by the Lakes exhibit. So they will have a feature on our second floor. It's called Hit Me With Your Best Shot. I believe this is our fifth or sixth annual one. Uh, it celebrates South Louisiana's beloved bird watching hotspot. So it is a national competition, an exhibition of photographs of birds found around the United States. The top 50 photographs will be selected and judged and then put up on display. Oh, wow. So it's really cool. They do this every year and we do some uh, workshops uh, centered around it. So we have that coming up in October. October 1st and 2nd is our bird song workshop where our um, one of my staff members, Miss Carol Ann, as well as with uh, Charlene Kea will be leading this. They have a master naturalist coming in to kind of give some educational information about local songbirds. And then they will be crafting songbirds themselves. And then Dan Plummer, who is the president of Gallery by the Lake, comes in and teaches them how to photograph birds in different landscapes. Well, I'm sure as you're kind of um, getting knee deep in, in kind of organizing that, you've probably learned a few of the things that I did about this area <laughs> getting in. I've never really, you know, you, you knew that there were birders, people that took photographs of birds and really enjoyed birds and kind of went, but you don't really realize how serious of a craft it is and until I kind of moved here and and really specifically got this job here. And you learn we're such a hotbed for birds and the migratory paths, the way that it works. There's multiple that kind of intersect here. Um It's serious business. It is. These birders are serious. I haven't gotten as deep probably as you, but I'm sure (laughs) I will soon. Uh, So can't wait for this opening. We also have um, another exhibit coming up in October. Mm -hmm. It is Ubule Women, uh, Beadwork in the Art of Independence. So this is a collection that showcases a new form of bead art 
developed by a community of women living and working together in South Africa. So this oh, wow. is another really cool cultural experience that you can kind of dive into, you know, into these women's lives in South Africa. Sure. Um, what about some of the past exhibits? I, I just want to touch on them to kind of maybe get an idea of, of what we could see again and some, uh, some kind of things that y'all have done. I know y'all have featured people like Pablo Picasso and Norman Rockwell, who are obviously, they kind of transcend the art space they in terms do. of people and knowing who both, they are. Those are both very cool exhibits. Um, and then, you know, things that kind of tie in that people are obviously very familiar uh, with and and have a tie to history, things like the Titanic. You guys had unearthed things from there. And then even a you guys worked with uh, the World War II Museum in New Orleans to craft uh, something for World War II. So I know those are just so, four of the bigger ones within the last few years. Um, if you could dive in a little bit to that, if you could. Yeah. So Titanic was actually a massive undertaking. It is the largest exhibit that we've ever hosted and it took up the entire building, all three floors. Um, so that was really, really neat and a, a learning experience for our staff. Um, there was a lot of things that were involved with putting it together, um, and, and keeping up with, you know, their requirements for it. I actually attended, um, pr probably the same touring one, uh, in Branson. So I kind of know a little bit about like mm. what we had here and there was a lot of interactiveness with it was the heart of the ocean part of it the necklace that she throws off the ship right at the end of the movie they got it <laughs> yeah 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 they found it but what was interesting about that is that uh we partnered with mcneese and calcasieu parish school board and other school systems and it was literally just a revolving door of tour buses coming sure. in to see it from all over um like it was one after the other hundreds of people that came through to see titanic so we definitely love to bring something like that back mm -hmm. to lake Charles, um, just to get a ton of people through the door. Any of those that, that, that caught your eye when you were doing it and you saw something that really spoke to you or thought that you just thought was incredible? I think, like I just touched on with the Titanic, just how many people it brought sure. through the door is really inspiring. And I love the work of Pablo Picasso and Norman Rockwell. So that was that's something that we would like to bring in. We have um, some pretty cool art hanging up right now from local Louisiana painters that are super inspiring. They're of uh, Louisiana landscapes. It's oil on canvas, and they're just stunning with their display of color. They highlight the different marshes, lakes, and landscapes, That's and awesome. it's very inspiring. And I wanted to say before, I think y'all are just now closing this exhibit down or just got done, the found art exhibit that y'all had there that it was – kind of just thrown together. It was people that took boards and trash and old things. Yes, and, and plastic forks. And, and then created sculptures, incredible yeah. sculptures or works of art. Yeah. That was one of the coolest exhibits I had ever seen. I'm not the biggest art buff. However, I looked at that and was like, man, that's awesome to see how you kind of recycled trash and made something really cool that, people you, look at that things you would differently. absolutely put in your house. Right. And it's, yeah, it's interesting how people have different perspectives of things. Like you look at something different than I look at something sure. and you looked at that and thought that's going to look great in my art. Right. Yeah. And so uh, I wanted to say that that even some of those exhibits, because they change so much, there's probably one that you'll find some way to speak to you that that's worth uh, passing by and seeing. Now, beside those exhibit, any other type of programming that the center offers for visitors like you know, I know we kind of talked about y'all do some type of workshops, lectures, family events. What, what do you guys kind of have ultimately? Yeah, we just hosted a six series workshop um, series that is actually going to end in October, uh, but we did it through the summer. And it was just various different art forms, learning how to do different types of arts. And again, we offer them very affordable. It was only $5 to attend. Um, so we did that. We have some more workshops coming up throughout the rest of the year, some Christmas themed ones. So we are hosting workshops year round. We uh, host various lecture talks. It, it really depends on the exhibit. A lot of times the artists like to do things and host things themselves. So they will, um, especially on like an opening night, you can most definitely usually find the artists there talking about their art. So those are great to attend. If you're interested in it and wanting to learn about it, those artists are usually there on opening night to, to learn about that. And, and we had mentioned that the arts had been such a focus for the city of Lake Charles, but so has the family friendly events. What do you guys kind of fit 
for, you know, for the family, for kids uh, in terms of that too. Yeah. So a lot of our workshops are geared towards children. Mm -hmm. These past ones over the summer, we, we wanted to kind of do something different with that. So we made it 16 and up, but a lot of them are children friendly, family friendly. Uh, we do have the farmer's market every Saturday morning on Bilbo Street behind Historic City Hall. And there's lots of things for kids to do as well as um, meet me at the market that we've just relaunched. It's the first Saturday of each month. So we have crafts, for kids, uh, we will eventually feature like a family day. So we do try and incorporate a range of age groups uh, featuring different activities and things like that. And pretty soon uh, in October going along with Hit mm -hmm. Me With Your Best Shot, we are partnering with the Calcasieu Parish Public Library to do a story time. And so this is going to be bird themed. Uh, they're bringing their uh, Pierre Pelican and it'll be bird themed <laughs> books and sure. we'll have a bird craft for them. So that's going to be really fun and cute. Uh, do y'all partner with other art uh, organizations, institutions in town? We partner with so many different people. We are always trying to involve different organizations uh, because it, it does bring in a different crowd. It brings in different perspectives of things. Um, so we work with all kinds of stuff. Um, we work with our independent galleries to have uh, their art in our building year round. We work with many community organizations such as the library, Arts and Humanities Council, uh, Visit Lake Charles will often bring a lot of tours through there. Yeah, I know those guys. <laughs> They're pretty cool. Uh, Imperial Kakashi Museum did a really cool event in our building with candlelights. Uh, Creatives of SWLA is a new organization that helped us put on this market. And we have um, a candlelight concert, a concert and candles with the Lake Charles Symphony coming sure. up. Well, with all that kind of history and, you know, it obviously makes it kind of special. What are your hopes and aspirations for the center moving forward that you kind of hope to highlight? My hope is that we continue expanding on the community's awareness of the rich art and culture that is heavily present and growing in our area. You know, there's still many people that are not aware of what we do or that Historic City Hall is an art and cultural mm -hmm. center. I feel like a lot of people think it's a governmental building because it is across from the courthouse across the street. Mm -hmm. They'll come into our building thinking that's where they're supposed to go. Or or I'll often hear, you know, I didn't know y'all had these things here or sure. I never knew that this existed or I've never thought to go here. So even people that have lived here their whole lives have probably never stepped foot in our building. Or I've gotten recently a lot of people have been like, oh, I haven't come here since it was the courthouse. So... A lot of people don't realize it's been a few years what we do here. So I'm hoping to just bring awareness to not only our center, but just the uh, huge art scene that we have. It's it's really buzzing and growing lately. You could, you could always just paint the outside of the building in vibrant colors. We cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> we have to preserve it. <laughs> uh, do you see any trends? Do you guys like follow art trends? That you then try to incorporate into uh, exhibitions or programs? Yeah. Yeah. One thing um, that's been really popular lately is immersive art. And that's something that we're trying to get into. It is expensive. But uh, two years ago, we did the Love Your Selfie Museum, if you recall. Um, we had local artists create different scenes uh, that you could come in and take pictures in front of, similar to like the Color Factory sure. or those interactive like selfie museums. And so that's something that we're kind of looking to bring back and expand on or maybe some other ones like the Van Gogh Museum I know is super popular. So that would be amazing if we could have some interactive things there. And um, we've been trying to keep up with, you know, social media art trends sure. too. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's constantly expanding. Um, how can listeners kind of find out more about Historic City Hall and Cultural Center, y'all's events, and then any way to kind of get involved? Yeah, so we are very involved on our social media. Um, we post all of our events, our exhibits, uh, things like that there. We'll often create events through Facebook so that it stays up on people's page. Uh, we do have, uh, we are on the City of Lake Charles website, but for more up-to-date information on what's actually going on, I would sure. definitely recommend our social media um, and reaching out to us through there is a great way to get involved. We don't uh, really have a volunteer program, but that is something I am looking to work towards in the future. Uh, but definitely with some of these events that we have going on, these workshops, these um, markets that we're doing, like we are welcome to take anyone that wants to collaborate. So they can reach out to us via social media and we're pretty prompt on there and I'll usually get back to it. 
Thanks again to Peyton for joining us here on the show, but thank you most of all for taking time out of your day to join us on this here podcast. If you enjoyed the show, would you please leave a follow for the podcast and leave us a rating or a review? As you know, it helps us grow and it helps our audience grow as well and helps us share these unique experiences that we have here in Lake Charles and Southwest Louisiana and really shows all that we have to offer. Head to visitlakecharles.org slash podcast. That's where you can get more episodes. You can uh, get some advice where to eat because we've got a lot of great places to do that. And specifically, events happening this weekend. I'm Brady Reynard. Thanks again for coming to play at Louisiana's Playground. Sit you.